we've looked at true proportional navigation. It was the product of a proportional gain, closing velocity, and line of sight rate. Augmented proportional navigation contains a true pronav term, but in addition, a term that has target acceleration in it. The idea is that we're inserting more information about the engagement, namely the target maneuver, for better intercept. As we've shown in previous modules, this law is optimal for a constant accelerating target. Here we're going to look at true and augmented proportional navigation for a head-on engagement, the pursuer moving toward the target at 1,500 feet per second, the target toward the pursuer at 1,000 feet per second. The target pulls a hard 3G turn, navigation gain of 3, and an initial separation of 30,000 feet. We investigate with numerical simulation. To start, we specify our engagement conditions. These are things like pursuer lead angle, heading error, pursuer inertial position, pursuer velocity, and for the target, heading angle, beta, target acceleration, target position, velocity, and of course the navigation gain in pronav. This input is used to determine the initial conditions to integrate the kinematics. We essentially have inertial positions, inertial velocities, and then the target heading angle, beta. That data starts with an initial input to the PRONAV law. Line of sight rate, target acceleration, closing velocity. That's used to integrate then the nonlinear kinematics forward one time step. That updated engagement data is fed back into the PRONAV law, which is used to then integrate the kinematics forward another time step. And this process continues until the final time, at which we post-process by visualizing or plotting the results of the engagement. And here's a result, true on the left, augmented on the right, where the arrows are the velocity vectors. Plotting the trajectories of the two engagements we see that true pronav monotonically increases to intercept the target, while augmented is slightly more complex. First, we have a tighter turn radius indicating larger acceleration initially. Then the augmented trajectory levels off. Ultimately, later on though, the trajectory slightly turns down, indicating that the acceleration is actually reverse sign. Let's explore this more with the acceleration profiles for each engagement. Here are the profiles for true and augmented. First, true initially is zero because line of sight rate is zero. And then true stays positive in terms of acceleration uh, all the way up to a peak of 4.4 Gs. Augmented has a very different acceleration profile. It actually starts at its peak acceleration, 4.5 Gs, and that is solely due to the augmentation term in the law. Notice our zero pronav value initially, and then n times at over 2, which gives 4.5 Gs. So augmented pronav monotonically decreases for this engagement as time increases, but it doesn't stop at zero actually it leads to a reversal of the acceleration direction uh, going down to about negative 2 g's near intercept. And this is consistent with what we observed in its trajectory as it had that slight inflection very late on in the engagement. Looking at the closing velocity, we see comparable values and form between both laws. The line of sight rates between the two laws are very different. Looking at true, when t is not equal to zero, 
we see a positive line of sight rate while augmented is negative when t is not equal to zero. The line of sight rotation is more apparent from the engagement visualization. Notice the counterclockwise rotation in true and the clockwise rotation in augmented. For augmented, that clockwise rotation of the line of sight angle puts the pursuer above the target in anticipation of intercept. While in true, the counterclockwise rotation puts the pursuer below the target. That is, the pursuer reacts to the target maneuver being slightly behind what the target is doing as it attempts to intercept. To put it another way, we can say that augmented is proactive while true is reactive. We can interpret augmented pronav behavior from the vantage of the linearized homing loop. Here's the pursuer target kinematics, and then dividing by closing velocity times time to go gives us line of sight rate. Differentiating that gives us lambda dot. Multiplying by n times vc gives us the true pronav acceleration command. And then because we're assuming a perfect pursuer response throughout all of this, the command is equal to the achieved. And this is our true linearized kinematics with proportional navigation. Augmented has this additional term. And it appears very simply as an additional feed forward term into the homing loop. When we derived augmented proportional navigation, it was derived as a feedback law. This is in the previous modules of this section two. But when we look at it from the vantage of the homing loop, we actually see that it's a feed forward control law. This feed forward term is the proactiveness in augmented pronav that allows us to anticipate what the target is going to do in order to provide better intercept performance. Let's explore the effect of navigation gain in augmented proportional navigation. Initially, the line of sight rate is zero, leaving just the augmented term, that is n times at over two. So as n increases, we have a increasing initial acceleration command from APN. This pays a dividend later on. Notice the smaller line of sight rate as time increases. And despite the fact that the augmentation term is larger due to larger n, notice that in the acceleration plot for increasing n, the magnitude of the acceleration required decreases as n increases. Let's talk about control effort. The divert metric is the integral of the acceleration magnitude over the engagement. It quantifies the amount of effort that's expended by an interceptor. To illustrate, consider this acceleration profile for an augmented pronav simulation. Taking its absolute value and then integrating to obtain the area under that absolute value, we get the divert. This table contains a summary of control effort for both true and augmented proportional navigation. The metrics of interest are max acceleration magnitude and the divert, and we obtain these metrics through numerical integration of the linearized kinematics and the nonlinear kinematics. I'll note that analytical formulas exist for the linearized engagement. However, here we're using numerical integration to obtain our results. Our navigation gain varies from two to seven. Comparing peak acceleration for the linearized engagements we see that up to a navigation gain of four, augmented is either equal to or less than true. However, for larger navigation gains, that additional term in augmented pronav 
causes the initial max acceleration requirement to exceed the max acceleration in true pronav. However, from an overall engagement perspective, integrating the magnitude of that acceleration over time, we see that the linearized augmented proportional navigation is consistently less than the true proportional navigation. And we see similar trends between linear and nonlinear. So in summary, augmented proportional navigation implements a feed-forward term in the homing loop to better correct for target acceleration. That feed-forward term contained the target acceleration. It uses additional information about the engagement, and that's why it's useful. It assumes we know what the target's going to do, and it employs that against the target. In that sense, APN is proactive in that feed-forward term, while true proportional navigation only is reactive. It's based off of feedback on what the target does. We saw that instantaneously, and specifically very early on in the engagement, augmented proportional navigation had higher acceleration requirements than true pronav. But those higher acceleration requirements were capitalizing on our knowledge of what the target was going to do. And then later on in the engagement, the acceleration requirement was less overall. From an energy cost standpoint, specifically from the divert metric, we saw that augmented pronav required less energy than true pronav. But all of this really relies on what the target is going to do and our knowledge of it. Augmented pronav is is useful and very capable against targets that pull hard turns or accelerate constantly and when we know what that acceleration is going to be. When the target does something different then APN will degrade and we have to evaluate whether it's suitable or whether something like a pure feedback law such as true pronav or pure pronav would be more reasonable given our uncertainty about the target maneuver set. This is Guidance from Optimal Control, Section 2, Module 3.